Okay, so in this lecture, I want to go through um, solving problems that require you to propose a synthesis of a of an aromatic molecule, a benzene sub, uh, a benzene with various substituents on it. Um, and we're going to this is going to require you to know a little bit about the formalities of proposing a synthesis, namely how to do a retrosynthesis. It turns out this isn't that big of a deal um, if you kind of remember what retrosynthesis is from um, organic one. And if you don't, it, comes back pretty quickly. This only requires about one lecture. So <clears throat> we're proposing a um, synthesis of a um, benzene with multiple substituents. So we want to have multiple substituents. And here's the kicker. We want to start with benzene. So this is our starting material. And we want to functionalize this to make some sort of target molecule. So let's say I give you a target molecule. This is like an example, OK? And I say, all right, let's make this molecule. So this is our target molecule. We want to make this propose, pros, come on, propose a synthesis of the target starting with benzene. So you would have to come up with a way to um, uh, to make this molecule starting with benzene. Benzene is your ultimate starting material. In this case, it's going to require two steps. We'll go through those in a second. OK, so what do we need to solve this, requ uh, solve this question? You need retro a retrosynthesis and a forward synthesis. Now, a common point of confusion in this question, question is things that you don't need. This is not proposing a mechanism. A mechanism is how a single reaction or maybe a few steps in a reaction take place in terms of curly arrows and that sort of thing. We don't need that here. We are just proposing what conditions we would use and then how we kind of solved the problem using retrosynthetic analysis. So you don't need a mechanism and curly arrows. You don't need to provide a mechanism and curly arrows for this problem. You're just showing me how you would make it. OK, so we have our target. And what we're going to do is we are going to work backwards. So this is going to be our retrosynthesis. Retrosynthesis means we're working backwards. And when we work backwards, we use a different style of arrow. We use this. Instead of a reaction arrow, we use this kind of double-tailed arrow to show us that we're working backwards. OK. And we notice we're starting with the end in mind. We're starting with our target and we're going backwards. OK, so what I like to do is I like to put a little squiggle around the bond that's being um, uh, made um, in the, re I guess, broken in the reverse direction. So what I'm saying is, what's the last bond I'm going to make? In this case, it's going to be this bond. We'll go through why I selected that bond later. I just want you to see the formalism. So this is our disconnection. Now, what that means is that the is that what I'm showing is I'm going to go backwards in time and say that this molecule plus this molecule, these are going to be my starting materials. So this is working backwards in the forward direction. I would take toluene, methyl benzene, and this acetyl chloride, this acid chloride that I show being plus the other. I would use those in the forward direction probably in a friedel crafts isolation, I would use those in the forward direction to make the target molecule. So again, I'm working backwards to try to get to benzene. Now I'm not to benzene yet, I'm to toluene. So what I'm going to do is work backwards from toluene to get benzene. And my disconnection point is going to be that bond. That is to say, that's the first bond I'm going to make in the forward direction. 
and I'm going to use CH3Cl, okay? Okay, so that's my complete retro synthesis. I worked backwards, I target, we're working backwards, and we get to the desired starting material. So you're going to do something like this, where you show the target, then you show a retro synthesis arrow back to some things that could lead to the target, and then you work back from those until you get to your desired starting point. In this case, my desired starting point is benzene. Everything else that along for the ride, the alkyl halides, the acid chlorides, we'll just assume we can buy those, and we can't. Okay, so that's my retro synthesis that is required. Now I'm going to show the forward synthesis. The forward synthesis is what reactions would you do? So this is where you actually show me what experiments you would do to make the molecule. The first thing I would do is I would take benzene and add it to CH3Cl. And the outcome is going to be toluene. So now I'm working in the forward direction. So I use my normal arrows. Now you might be thinking, is this all we have? Is First of all, is this all we have to do? Almost. We need to add the reagents that we would use to accomplish the reaction. So here we're going to use aluminum trichloride as a catalyst for the reaction. Okay. So I'm no, I, I'm, as I'm proposing in the forward direction, I'm thinking about how I would actually carry out this reaction. I thought about my starting materials and I thought about the products I wanted to get. The product is not the ultimate target, but it's along the way. I then thought about the reagent. I didn't need the reagent in my retrosynthesis. I could have included it if I needed to, but the retrosynthesis is supposed to be the helper that reminds you what your starting materials are and your products are for each of the steps in your reaction. You'll notice that all three of the structures that we needed for this reaction were provided in the retrosynthesis uh, here. So this is kind of like a predict the product question, except you have the answer right in front of you. If you've done your retrosynthesis correctly, all of the structures you need are right there. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and carry this on forward in my next step. And so I need to add this to something to give rise to my desired molecule. So there's my target structure. I guess it's upside down from what it was in the retrosynthesis, but it's the same thing. So what do I take toluene or methylbenzene and add it to to give rise to this product? Well, we have that already up in our retrosynthesis. You've done the heavy lifting in terms of thinking in your retrosynthesis. Now you're organizing your thoughts in the forward direction to plan out the actual experiments that you would carry out. And so it's going to be AlCl3 again, this time with acetyl chloride. What I'm doing is a sequential Friedel Crafts alkylation and Friedel Crafts acylation to give the product. Now, what I want us to recognize from the last few lectures is that what we have here is an ortho para director. We need to be aware of that so that if we carry out the experiment, we should see electrophiles adding here, here, and here, which means we are going to get our desired product plus the ortho product. So I have my ortho product and my para product both being formed under these reaction conditions. So I have formed my desired target. And what I need to do in one last step is purification. Now I don't need to provide as much detail. I'm just making note that I made a mixture of compounds and I need to have my compound purified. So I wanna show that I'm going to, I recognize I'm going to make the undesired ortho product and I need to remove that from my reaction mixture by some sort of purification process. So this is how you would propose a forward synthesis. You'd show your starting material benzene and the sequence of steps that you would take it through to give rise to your product. And in the last step, I need you to include a purification step if you form a mixture of mul multiple products and you, need to, and you need to have those separated. Okay, so here are some tips for doing this. Number one, just gonna say it again. You don't need curly arrows. It's like, it's, it's, it's a headache for me. If I see these questions, answers to these questions and I look down and somebody's proposed a mechanism for something. And I'm just like, uh, 
excuse me, you, you didn't need to do that. <laughs> and so now I have to find, sift through the details to see what you actually tried to communicate to me. Okay, so don't use any curly arrows. We're not proposing a mechanism. We're showing how we would execute a series of experiments. Hopefully you can see the value in this, right? We're learning all these reactions. Okay, it would be useful to know when you need to use them. So this is a way of proving it. If I give you a target and I say, okay, make this. Okay, so that's tip number one, no curly arrows. Tip number two, um, add activating groups first dot 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 if you can so if you can try to add the most um, activating groups first because then the reaction is more the benzene is going to become more reactive as the um, as you go through the sequence of steps you don't have to worry about hitting some no reaction steps but this is an if you can okay the other, other critical thing is pay attention to ortho para directors. Okay, I'm going to add a like a sub bullet to this, which is um, if groups are ortho or para, if the groups are ortho or para to each other, add the ortho para director first. Conversely, if the groups are meta, you need to add the meta directors first. Okay, so you have to pay attention to the order with which you carry out these reactions to make sure that you don't um, you don't kind of uh, accidentally set yourself up to not even being able to form the product. Like if you accidentally put a meta director on first and you want to get something ortho or para, uh, you're going to be like, oops, I should have flipped those steps. Let's look at an example of that. Let's say I change the target slightly. From the original target, I'm going to go to having the CH3 at this position. Now, what I have here is I have a meta relationship. Meta. If they're meta, then I need to put the meta director on first. Okay. So I put the meta director on first because the groups are meta to each other and my meta director is the carbonyl group. So I need to do the Friedel-Crafts acylation first. Now what that looks like is I'm going to take, well, shoot, I need to get, I want to get full credit. So I'm not just going to write a synthesis. I'm going to go and do a retro synthetic analysis. So now my disconnection point right before forming the product is going to be that ortho para director, which was the methyl group. Let me say that in a different way. I want to put that on last, which means it's my first disconnection when I'm working backwards. I don't need to include the ALCL3, but I can if I want to. I'll do it this time just so you can see what it looks like. I'm not gonna worry about if you have that there or not. That's just for you. Retrosynthesis is required to earn the points, but realize that what retrosynthesis is doing, retrosynthetic analysis is doing, is setting you up to clear your head and clear your thoughts and find a solution before you have to worry about um, you know, things like what reagents you need to add and that sort of thing. Okay, so next our disconnection point is going to be the acyl group to give rise to benzene, which is our desired starting material. So if I take benzene now and I add it to acetyl chloride, so now I'm working in the forward direction. Above was the retrosynthesis. If you notice, I had my retro arrows. I didn't have any curly arrows, I had my retro arrows. Okay, so now we're going to add those two things together with ALCL3. I don't have to think much about this. The answer is right in the retrosynthetic analysis. Everything, all the structures you need. You're just adding maybe a catalyst here and there. Go drag my structure down to the next line so I don't confuse it with the reaction up above. But at this point, I'm going to add a CH3 Cl plus ALCL3. We have deactivated the ring by having the deactivating carbonyl um, added, but it's the only way that we can get a meta relationship. So here I'm not going to worry about whether or not the reaction occurs. If I had a choice, 
and it didn't matter in terms of orthopara direction, I would want to put the meta director on first. I don't need to do any purification this time because the two meta positions that are available for the CH3 to add to um, results in the same product by symmetry. Okay, so those are examples. The key thing is to work backwards and then hit your forward synthesis, keeping in mind all the things that you um, learned about the reaction conditions. Let's do another example where we've got a bigger molecule. Let's say, I'm really coming up with this right now. Okay. All right, so I've got a, uh, an isopropyl, a chlorine, and a nitro group. This is my target molecule. What I want to immediately do is go to a retrosynthetic analysis. And I want to think about which of those three substituents do I want to add last. Now, it turns out in terms of orthopara relationship, it's not going to matter too much as long as Put the isopropyl group on first because that's my orthopara director it's going to take over everything the chlorine group is an orthopara director but it's deactivating it's not as deactivating those nitro group the nitro group is the most deactivating which means it's going to render my benzene least reactive so i'm going to put the nitro group on last which means it's my first disconnection working backwards Okay, which means we're going to go from here plus um, HNO3 is the reagent of choice to do uh, the nitric acid reaction, plus probably a little bit of H2SO4. Okay, so now I'm not at benzene. Whoop, I have a normal reaction arrow. I'm not ready to do chemistry in this. It was at this point that we would usually just do one more step and hit our benzene, but that's not the case. You can see that we have a chlorine atom and an isopropyl group. So to get to benzene, we have to do two more steps at least. Now let's look at this. We have a chlorine and an isopropyl group. The isopropyl group is an alkyl group, which is activating. The chlorine atom is deactivating. They're both ortho para directors and the groups are ortho to each other. So it doesn't really matter which order we have in terms of ortho para directing, but the isopropyl group is more, re, is more activating. And this, is, uh, this chlorine atom is a weak deactivator. Okay, so I'm gonna put the isopropyl group on last, which means my next disconnection is going to be chlorine atom when I work backwards. Okay, so I'm still not at benzene. Now I need to add the isopropyl group. Turns out I've got a great group for friedel crafts alkylation because it won't rearrange to anything crazy. It's just that it can, it can only form a, the secondary carbocation would be the most stable carbocation it could form and it doesn't have a huge amount of steric hindrance. Okay, so now we're there. That's our retrosynthetic analysis. So we've done the heavy lifting in terms of thought. Now we need to organize our ideas in the forward direction. I'm just going to redraw the starting materials from my last disconnection in the retrosynthetic analysis and include any catalysts I need to accomplish the reaction. In this case, for Friedel Crafts alkylation, we need to add AlCl3. I'm going to take that product and I'm going to react it with Cl2. I'm not going to worry about overreaction. Like I know toluene overreacted with FeBr3 and Br2. I'm not going to worry about that in this case. That's chlorine's not as reactive as bromine in terms of an electrophile, so it's hard to know what would happen if you went to lab. If you go into lab, it overreacts, just take away the catalyst. Okay, we're just going to keep the reaction conditions our typical conditions. The thing is, we have to recognize though that in this case, we're going to form two products an ortho and a para product because the isopropyl group is an ortho para director, it's not just one. You can't just say, okay, this time don't give me the para product. It's just, you know, it's, it's a molecule, it's chemistry, it's gonna do its thing. So we do have the para product being formed. That's not a desired, um, that's not a desired product along the way towards our target molecule. So we need to do a purification. 
we need to call attention to that because it tells us that we form both, both the ortho and para products. Okay, so now we have a Cl here and we've purified the compound away. So with our isopropyl group and our chlorine atom, we have an electron donating group that's activating um, towards this ortho position and this para position. And then we have a deactivating chlorine that's activating towards that, those, that ortho position and that para position. So seemingly all four sites on our um, molecule are, and I shouldn't have, last time that worked, okay. I should have the red dot on, excuse me, I just wanna put the red dot in the chlorine atom. Um, okay, so all four of the open sites available for the electrophile to add to are open, but the alkyl group is more electron donating. So we can pretty much ignore the chlorine atoms because the alkyl group is going to override everything. That means we can add our HNO3 and I believe we have H2SO4 in the reaction conditions as well. Okay, if we do that in the forward direction, we're going to get a mixture of what I would consider predominantly two products. That is, we're going to have the NO2 group over here plus the NO2 group over here. That's those, those are those two um, sites of reaction um, that I highlighted in green. Okay, so what we have to do is do a purification to get, which one did I have? The para product? Yeah, para product was our target. So I need to do a purification to get to the final product. And that is uh, the, the final product that we've, we've made. And again, we used our retrosynthetic analysis to guide our thought. It had all the structures. We just had to provide the reagents. We had to organize things a little bit to make sure it was clear what experiments we were actually going to conduct. But that's how you do a retrosynthetic analysis and a forward synthesis for proposing a product of um, multiple electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. Okay, that'll do it for this lecture. See you next time.